Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to hook up your Skywatcher EQ6R Pro to Green Swamp Server. Now, Green Swamp Server is a telescope driver, and uh, I'm going to show you how to hook up your mount to that and uh, get that onto Nina. Now, there's a couple of different connection methods, and before, I wanna stress this, before you hook up any cabling, make sure that you watch this in its entirety and have all of your drivers, as you can cause irreparable damage to the mount if you hook up before having the proper software and drivers. Um, there are two connection methods that you can do with this mount if you have the newer version. Um, one of them, which is my preferred method, uh, is going to be a USB to serial cable method. This requires a special driver in itself, which I'm going to show you how to install. The other method is going to be a USB um, C cable. Uh, if you're using this, make sure you get a high quality cable uh, to minimize connection issues. Um, I think this is an aperture cable off of highpointscientific.com. Uh, just make sure you have a quality cable. So I'm gonna bring you over to my computer and show you how to do this. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is open up your favorite web browser and go to google.com. Now there is a prerequisite to this and that's ASCOM. So if you haven't already installed ASCOM, please do so now as you're going to need it. I do have a video going over how to install ASCOM and I'll post a link to that in the description of this video. So please watch that. And um, if you already have ASCOM installed, we can move forward. Now it's very important to understand, do not cable your mount until you have the proper software and drivers as you can cause irreparable damage to your mount if you don't have the proper software and drivers. So please watch this video in its entirety before cabling the mount. So again, what you wanna do is go to google.com and then you're gonna type in Green Swamp Server. If you don't see it pop up, just continue typing Green Swamp Server until it pops up and click on it greenswamp.org, click on this link here, GS server, downloads, and you want to install the latest and greatest. In this case, April 22nd, 2023. Now I already have these installed, so I'm not going to redo them, but basically what you're going to do is click on the link. Depending on your system, it'll pop up a box in the top right is your downloads box you'll see it download when it's done click open file and you may or may not get a box that pops up asking if you want to allow the application to make changes to your device if you get that just click yes follow the install wizard and you'll have green swamp server on your computer the next thing you're going to need is a prolific driver so the mount can communicate with the computer through a virtual COM port. So you're going to go back to google.com and you're going to type in Skywatcher Prolific Driver. If you don't see it pop up, just continue typing Skywatcher Prolific Driver until it does. Click on it. And skywatcher.com, Prolific USB to Serial Device Driver. Windows driver, prolific USB to serial device driver. Again, click download. You'll see your downloads box pop up. It'll download. When it's done, click open file. Allow it to make changes to your device if it asks. Follow the install wizard and you'll have the prolific USB to serial device driver on your computer. Now, if you're using the USB-C connection method, that's all that you're gonna need. If you're using my preferred method, which is the USB to serial cable, there is one more thing you need. And now just to pause for a second, I want to stress this and make sure everyone understands. Always make sure that you use the manufacturer's recommended drivers. It could be different for each manufacturer. Even if you get the same cable that I have, which I'm going to post a link to that cable 
uh, in the description of this video. It's the cable recommended by Skywatcher. It, it was on Amazon, I think it was 36 bucks. Um, good cable, make sure to follow the instructions because they could change the driver that they want. In this case, if it's the same driver, uh, what they want me to do is go to ftdichip.com slash drivers. You want the D2XX drivers and click here to download the Windows 7 to Windows 11 and Windows Server. This is going to give you both the virtual COM port drivers and D2XX drivers. Now it's important to understand here, this is so this cable can communicate. You're still going to need the prolific driver that we just installed. So make sure you install that as well. And if you're using the uh, USB to serial cable, install this. You're gonna click here. It's gonna bring up your downloads box. You'll see it download. When it's done, click open file. Allow it to make changes to the device if it asks. Follow the install wizard and you have that driver. Now, from there, now we can cable up the mount. So if you look at the mount head on the face plate, you're gonna see several ports. In the upper left, you're gonna see the power port, which you're gonna put the uh, power cable for the mount. And then if you have the newer version of the EQ6R Pro like I have, you're gonna see three vertical ports. The top two are black. The very top one is gonna be your auto guider port. The next one down is your hand controller port. And then below that is your USB-C port. Now, if you look through the accessories that came with your mount, you should see a little gray clip. Go ahead and install that. I have mine and I found it in the best spot uh, underneath the wording Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. And what that clip does is it allows um, one, it, it keeps the cables uh, in place as the mount is slewing so it doesn't uh, tug on the cables and do any damage. And it also helps uh, route them where they need to go to avoid snagging. And, and right below the wording Skywatcher EQ6R Pro is where I found it to be best. So it um, routes the cables and keeps them uh, from getting tugged on. So once the mount is all cabled up, um, make sure that you have everything connected in the proper spot. If you're using the USB-C cable, plug the square end of that cable into the USB-C port at the very bottom, and then plug the other end of that cable into a USB port on the computer. If you're using the USB to serial cable, make sure you plug that into the hand controller serial port. It's very important that you have that plugged into the correct spot. Otherwise you can cause irreparable damage to the mount. So make sure the serial end of the cable goes into the hand controller serial port on the mount head and the USB end of the cable goes into a USB port on the computer. Once that's done, you can go ahead and turn on your mount. And what you're gonna do is go to device manager. Now this is gonna be part of your routine. You're always gonna check this before you do anything else. And I'm gonna explain why. You're gonna find ports, COM and LPT, and USB serial port make sure that you notate this right here. In my case, I'm connected to COM5. That may or may not be the case for you. So notate which COM port that is. Uh, in my case, it always connects to COM5. In your case, it may or may not. You may have a different COM port each and every time. And that's why you always wanna go into device manager before you connect to anything else to make sure which COM port that is. Once you confirm that number, double click, go to port settings, data bits eight, parity none, stop bits one, flow control none. Make sure these are set just like that. Now this is an important part right here. 
This is your baud or bits per second. This is how data flows through the cables and it's gonna vary. Now, not to get too technical with it, but the USB-C port and the uh, hand controller serial port communicate with the board in the mount differently. And that's why this matters. If you're using my preferred method, the USB to serial cable, your bits per second is gonna be 9,600. If you're using the USB-C connection method, your bits per second is gonna be 115,200. So again, USB to serial, 9,600. USB-C, 115,200. So make sure you have those set accordingly. In my case, I'm using the USB to serial, so I'm gonna leave it at 9,600. Okay, once you're done there, now you can open up Green Swamp Server. And there's a couple of things we're gonna check here. First, go to Options, check No Sleep Mode. You don't want this to shut down and stop communicating after a given amount of time. So make sure to check no sleep mode. Make sure home warning on is checked. And we're gonna click the three horizontal lines under main, I apologize, main, and then the three horizontal lines. Make sure this matches what you found in device manager. If this does not match, it's never gonna connect. Again, in my case, it was COM5. It may or may not be that for you. Your baud rate, again, 9600 for USB to serial, 115200 for USB-C. In my case, I'm using USB to serial, so I'm gonna leave it at 9600. Mount type, Skywatcher. This is your guide rate. I find with this software and this mount, RA guiding at 90 and deck guiding at 90 work best. You can play around with this, experiment with it. Keep in mind, if you change this value, you have to redo uh, another profile wizard in PHD2. We'll get into that later. Uh, in the meantime, if you're just starting with this mount and this software, I would set it to 90 on both of them and see how it goes. And then we'll talk about setting up PHD2 in a later video. And that is pretty much all for this. So we're gonna go back to um, back to here. Again, mount type Skywatcher. Make sure that you're at your home position, which is gonna be uh, you know, your um, counterweight bar straight down and your OTA pointing straight forward. And you hit connect, we hit okay, and now we're connected to Green Swamp Server. Now we can open up Nina. Equipment, telescope, you got a few different um, drivers in here. And what you want to make sure of is um, your ASCOM GS Sky Telescope is selected. The settings is going to be your Green Swamp server, what we just went through, so you don't need to do anything there. From there, you can connect your telescope. Now, Nina. has full control of your telescope. Now, one thing I want to uh, stress here is before you slew or anything like that, you start off in your home position, which is counterweight bar straight down, OTA straight forward. Um, and after you connect, hit set as park. You want, you want to do that every single time. 
and then you can go to you know three point polar alignment go to a target whatever it is that you're going to do um, always make sure to set as park before you do anything else and that is as uh, much as it takes to connect to green swamp server and have green swamp server uh, run your mount through the session now as always before um, just shutting things down and, and you'll notice here connected applications one when you connect to phd2 you'll see two um, because you'll have nina and phd2 connected into this always make sure just like a computer you want to um, shut it down properly before you disconnect anything or shut anything down. Disconnect your equipment. Connected application zero. Now we can disconnect. And that's how you install Green Swamp Server, connect your mount to Green Swamp Server, and connect that to Nina. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any questions or I did not explain anything thoroughly enough, please, I don't get offended by questions. Or if you tell me, hey, I, I didn't understand that one part, just let me know. Put a comment in the video or send me an email, hiddenlightinquiries at gmail.com. I like questions. I expect there to be questions. I, I just want everyone to have a good time with this and make it as easy as possible. So again, any questions, do not hesitate. Uh, if you have recommendations for other content or other things that you wanna learn, uh, put a recommendation out there. Um, other than that, uh, stay tuned for the next video. And until then, clear skies.